Hello, my name is Eric Murray and I'm the president of Cascadia College. I'd like to welcome our students, our faculty and staff, our board of trustees, our community, and our friends to this virtual graduation 2020. Graduates, you are receiving your diploma in a time in the United States, let alone in the world, that we will never forget. 2020 has been a true test of our humanity. A global pandemic, followed by an economic crisis, followed by protests that have hopefully sparked changes to centuries of racism. These things have all led to emotions in us that include fear and grief and anxiety, but we also hope it is leading to a true revolution. We understand the impacts on our systems and our laws and our government. And we know also that this movement has begun with the masses and we hope it leads to true change. At Cascadia, we are scrutinizing ourselves and our college every day to understand the impacts of racial bias. We are looking to see how white supremacy has influenced our systems. We are looking to understand why students of color drop out at rates higher than white students, or that why students of color don't reach this moment, graduation, like white students do. We are looking to understand why people of color don't hold more leadership positions at the college. We are looking at every aspect of our institution to see what we can do to overcome this institutional racism. Over the next few minutes, you will hear some voices from very powerful leaders in our history, and we hope that you will take these moments to reflect on what this time in our world means. After that, we're going to spend a few minutes celebrating you because you are part of the change. We're gonna be a little goofy, we'll be a little inspirational. We will celebrate you and this tremendous achievement that you've reached today, graduation and your diploma. You are the revolution. Cast down your bucket among these people who have without strength in labor wars, steal your feet, clear your forests, build in your railroads and cities, brought forth treasures from the bowels of the earth, help to make possible this magnificent representation of the progress of the South. If you believe that the Negro has a soul, if you believe that the Negro is a man, if you believe the Negro was endowed with their senses commonly given to other men by the Creator, then you must acknowledge that what other men have done, Negroes can do. We have fought to preserve one nation conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Yes, we have fought for America with all her imperfections. Not so much for what she is, but for what we know she can be. We declare our right on this earth to be a man, to be a human being, to be respected as a human being, to be given the rights of a human being in this society, on this earth, in this day, which we intend to bring into existence by any means necessary. After I was placed in the cell, I began to hear sounds of licks and screams. I could hear the sounds of licks and horrible screams. And I could hear somebody say, can you say yes, sir, nigga? All of this is on account of we want to register to become first class citizens. Somewhere I read of the freedom of assembly. Somewhere I read of the freedom of speech. Somewhere I read of the freedom of press. Somewhere I read that the greatness of America is the right to protest for right. I know that millions of Americans from all walks of life agree with me that leadership does not mean putting the air to the ground to follow public opinion, but to have the vision of what is necessary and the courage to make it possible. Your time has come. Pick up your slingshot. Pick up your rock. Declare our time has come. A new day has begun. Red, yellow, black, and white. We're all precious in God's sight. Our time has come. Social realities that might have appeared 
impenetrable, inalterable, unchangeable, came to be viewed as malleable and transformable. And people learn how to imagine what it might mean to live in a world that was not so exclusively governed by the principle of white supremacy. So when you talk about issues of diversity, you're not talking about something marginal and peripheral. You're talking about the quest for truth. Because what is diversity? What does it signify? It signifies precious, priceless human beings who have been wounded and scarred and bruised, whose humanity has been called into question, human beings who have been terrorized and traumatized and stigmatized. What could more profoundly vindicate the idea of America than plain and humble people, unsung, the downtrodden, the dreamers not of high station, not born to wealth or privilege, not of one religious tradition, but many, coming together to shape their country's course. What greater expression of faith in the American experiment than this? What greater form of patriotism is there than the belief that America is not yet finished, that we are strong enough to be self-critical? No justice, no peace, no justice, no peace, no justice. And if we don't get no justice, there ain't going to be no damn peace. That's the bottom line. in person today. We know that it is such an enormous achievement for you and an important day in your life. But unfortunately, we can't make that happen. And for the last couple of years, we've taught you to think creatively and critically. So let's put that to work. And with my selfie stick, I'm going to try to recreate Graduation Day 2020 for you, our Cascadia graduates. Let me paint the picture for you. It's June 27th, 2020, in Bothell, Washington. And we've gone from this to this. Choice of footwear is important on a day like today, so you can wear your comfy sneakers, or your Birkenstocks, or your blue suede shoes, or your high heel fancies. You, your friends, your family, you've gotten to campus somehow. Now that may have been by bus, maybe a car, bicycle, or maybe you even walked. Excitement builds, and now it's time to get in line for a procession. We always have someone big lead us in, so this year we were able to arrange Aretha Franklin. That didn't quite work. So we went to our next choice. Ricky, Ricky Martin. Martin. Uh, no, not gonna work either. So, you know, how about pomp and circumstance? So you're walking around the corner, getting ready to approach the chairs and the gigantic stage that we've set up for graduation. And you see your family in the audience. Make sure you wave to Uncle Joe. How about Grandpa Bob? There's always Aunt Ellen. Hey, honey. Smile. What about your little brother, Timmy? Don't forget to wave to your best friends. Woo! You go! Go! Yeah, man! And it's time to start thinking about how you're going to get across the stage. There's the thumbs up grad, the dancing student, the shy Cascadian, the selfie lover, Finally, the proud member of the class of 2020. Good afternoon. Welcome. Welcome class of 2020 to graduation at Cascadia College. 
Graduates, over the time that you've been with us, we hope that you have learned to think critically and creatively, to learn actively, to interact in diverse and complex environments, to communicate with originality and clarity. Those are the things that we've hoped you've learned and can take with you from this point on. Your next steps are up to you. You can take this education and move on to yet another degree. You can go into the workforce. But most importantly, we need you to solve the challenges that our world is facing right now. It's you graduates with this education that will take this world forward and solve the problems that we face right now. And we want you to know we are all rooting for you. Congratulations, class of 2020. From all the faculty at Cascadia College to all the 2020 graduates, congratulations. Congratulations, Cascadia graduates. Well, congratulations, graduates. I hope you take everything that you've learned here at Cascadia College and make the world a better place with it. Congratulations to you, class of 2020. Despite the unprecedented time we're here, you all made it. Congratulations, graduates. We're really proud of you. Congratulations to the first graduates of Cascadia's mobile app development bachelor's program. Your determination and creativity is inspiring. Congratulations, class of 2020. You made it. Congratulations, class of 2020. Felicidades. Got it. Hats off, and then we take the hats off? Yeah. And then we say cheers, and we cheers with our glasses. And you have to know which way you're going. We all yeah, go to the, what if we all go to the center? Yeah. What, great, what, your center is what, what's your center? What's your center? Now? Congratulations, Cascadia College Class of 2020. Congratulations, and good luck. I'm Dr. Jesus Perez. Congratulations to the Class of 2020. I know it's been a very difficult time for all, but your generation has become more resilient and you will, will prevail. Congratulations again. Congratulations, Cascadia Class of 2020. You have accomplished so much this year, and we are very proud of you. Congratulations, graduates. You persevered and you made it through some really trying circumstances to reach your goal. I wish you the very best as you move on to your next adventure. Congratulations, students. You did it. Congratulations. Congratulations, class of 2020. You made it. We're so proud of you. So if I do this, is that then? Oh, OK. That can't be right. It is right. We're all centered. It's right, it's right on my end. <laughs> Hi, everyone. My name is Elisa Sandoval, and I am a fellow Cascadia graduate this year. And I just want to take some time and congratulate you all on your amazing accomplishment. I am so proud of each and every one of you for breaching the finish line and achieving something like this. I know it has been a long and stressful year and you've probably faced many hardships, you know, along your path, whether it was this year or last year or just somewhere along your journey. And I acknowledge that because I know I've had my own personal hardships and there's been times where it's been great and there's been times where it's been really hard. And I just want to honor that and say that I am 100% with you all on that. And you should all be patting yourself on the backs. So you should be applauding yourselves. And I hope you're celebrating yourselves and your achievement. And whether this is, you know, your first step to a new school, whether you're going to a new university or whether you're going to enter the workforce and get a job, you know, we're all going to take different paths. But this is a time to celebrate yourself, celebrate your hard work and celebrate everything you've overcome. You know, this year has been unpredictable and, you know, none of us could have seen a lot of these things that have happened coming and we all had to, you know, do a whole spring quarter online, whether we wanted to or not. And I don't know about you all, but it was hard to adjust. It was hard to persevere through all the difficulties, you know, and that's not even including your everyday life struggles, you know, whether it's with work or school or your family, you know, we all have our own hardships and I want to acknowledge that. Um, I've had such an honor to be able to go to Cascadia, get my education, and also serve students as a member of student life. Last year, I was on the activities board as a special events and traditions coordinator, and this year I got to be the programming chair for the events and advocacy board. And 
it has been an amazing experience. I have grown so much as a person and I've learned so many skills that are gonna help me, you know, at my next college, in my future jobs and just in life, honestly. I got to make an impact on my community and that was something I didn't know if I was gonna be able to do, you know, at this college. But I really feel like I got to leave my mark and help students and do things that were important to me. Um, I want to take time to thank my two advisors, Shandy Stomorowski and Becky Riopel, for all of their help in my journey and many other student journeys. Um, they've impacted me as a student leader. I know they've impacted countless students around the campus. And they're just amazing human beings who've taught me how to become the leader I am, who given me skills that I'm going to use for the rest of my life. And not only that, I've had so many amazing memories from student life, whether it was planning my first art carnival this year or helping my first spring fest last year, which I was really sad we didn't get to have this year. But, you know, we still made it work. And that's something that I love about Cascadia, about student life, about my whole experience, you know. We're always trying to make things work and we're always trying to do the best we can. Um, but yeah, I am so thankful for my time at Cascadia, for everything I've learned, for all the people who've had an impact on me. Um, I've had so many amazing professors and so many amazing faculty members who, you know, have helped me and made, you know, my next step possible going to university. And I'm never going to forget my two years here. Um, whether it's from, you know, trying to get a parking spot every day or, you know, going to the amazing events that I get to be a part of. I had such an amazing experience and I feel like I'm going to be looking back on these days for the rest of my life and all the lessons I've learned. Um, but yeah, I'm so excited for my next journey and I hope you all are. I know you're all going to do amazing things and you're all going to persevere through life and I can't wait to see what everyone does and hear about what everyone does and I'm so glad we get to all share this moment and celebrate our accomplishment because this is an accomplishment and you should all be proud of yourselves and like I said I hope you really are celebrating yourself, your hard work, and your perseverance because I know we all wouldn't be here without those things so as a fellow student, congratulations. I wish you all the best in any of your future endeavors and um, I hope you have a great summer and I hope you all have a great next step in your life. Hello Cascadia students, congratulations on your tremendous accomplishment of graduation. What an awesome day, I hope you celebrate and on behalf of the board, we just wanna say we're very proud of you. Congratulations Cascadia graduates. You have graduated during this incredibly difficult time. Quite the accomplishment for which you can be very proud. Bravo. Graduates of the class of 2020, I congratulate you on your successful completion of earning your degree here at Cascadia College. As a trustee, I am so proud of all of you and I wish you all the best in your next endeavors. Congratulations. Congratulations, graduates. I wish you all the best on your next adventure. Congratulations, Cascadia Class of 2020. Congratulations to all graduates, but I want to say a special congratulations to all international students. I'm so proud of you. Best wishes from me. Bye. Hello from Human Resources and Payroll, everyone. Congratulations to all the students who have worked so hard and we are so impressed by you and this has been the most intense year and you did it. So congratulations 2020, class 2020. Bye. Graduates or hats off graduates? Hats off to you graduates. Take Cheers. the hat off. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers to the middle. I forgot the third one. Good luck. Good luck. And impose. And then I'm pulling out my tambourine. You can't stop me. Hello, Cascadia students, graduates of 2020. Uh, congratulations to all of you. And have fun for the summer and keep going. Congratulations. Congratulations, you did it. Yay. Have fun. Bye-bye. Congratulations, graduates. We're so proud of you and all that you've accomplished and look forward to seeing what you'll do next. 
graduating class of 2020, congratulations on reaching this milestone in your academic journey. I wish you the best in your future academic goals and your endeavors. Wish you the best. Hey Cascadia graduates, I wish we were all in person marching down the promenade, but we uh, wish you success in all of the things that you do in your future and congratulations. Before I begin, I want to take a moment to acknowledge that we are on the traditional land of the first people of Seattle. The Duwamish people, past and present, in honor with gratitude, the land itself and the Duwamish tribe. I also would like us to recognize the injustices they have been forced to experience. Their land was stolen, they were stripped of their sovereignty. May we provide restitution for the damages that they have endured and restore their rightful land, sovereignty, and federally recognized identity. Thank you. Welcome class of 2020. You did it and congratulations. For those who don't know me, I am Doctora Soraya Cardenas, affectionately known as Dr. C. I am here to deliver a speech that I hope will open your eyes, your heart, and help you reflect on what's happening around you because we're in the middle of making history. My speech today is called 10 Lessons for People of Color, but I also want to recognize other marginalized groups who have experienced oppression, such as the members of the LGBTQIA community, the differently abled, and many others. But before I share my 10 lessons, I want to challenge everyone to let go of meritocracy. What's that, you might be asking? That's the bootstrap mentality that if you work hard enough, you can achieve anything. Now, let's take a look at that belief system. Imagine that we are sitting next to each other today. Can you honestly tell your peers that you worked harder and you're more deserving? Meritocracy lends itself to the false sense of entitlement. Somehow you deserve that job more, that house, that car, but shouldn't we all have access to quality education, housing, affordable health care, meaningful employment. Meritocracy also erases our supporting community's contribution. I didn't make it here by myself. I had my parents who provided me a stable environment. I had mentors like Teresa Baron McKegney. She made me feel invincible. My doctorate advisor, Dr. James Allen Williams, officially known as Al, he died last year. He pushed me to get my PhD. These are just a handful of players that had a meaningful impact on my life. Take a moment right now to recognize those who helped you. And if they are nearby, tell them, thank you. So challenge number one is to let go of meritocracy. Next, I challenge you to widen your lens. I know that I like Trevor Noah, John Oliver, and Never Have I Ever, but that is my echo chamber. I tend to gravitate towards what makes me comfortable. So right now, with our civil unrest, some of us are being swayed by our political preferences and inclinations. I challenge you to stop labeling yourself a conservative, a liberal, a Republican, a Democrat. Just be a plain human being on this earth that we all share. We must work together to make this home for all of us. From creating safe, equ equitable spaces, giving everyone access to basic human needs, to loving and taking care of our environment. Finally, I challenge you to help others. For example, I want to build an AI company one day that helps humanity instead of profit from them, but that's unrealistic. But what I do is conduct research about having more people of color and women in technical fields like computer science. Artificial intelligence is being built without input from marginalized groups, which is creating a system of more extreme biases and economic inequalities. For example, the crime machine that was built in New York. This machine, was led to, has basically led to police unfairly targeting black and brown people. These are just two examples, but your list can be as simple as donating to a cause, smiling, listening, opening a door, or voting. Yes, register to vote and vote for candidates in issues that will benefit the greater good of society. So as you can tell from my three challenges, we need to work together but today, I also want to give 10 lessons to people of color. But I also want to recognize other marginalized groups who have experienced oppression, such as the members of the LGBTQIA community and differently abled and many others. These are 10 lessons that I wish someone had told me because no one prepared me for what was to come. First, I want to talk about identity. 
My colonized pan-ethnic identity is Latina. My political colonized identity is Mexican. My nationality is occupied America. My genetic identity is important because my body is a canvas of historical oppression. My distant relatives migrated from Western, Central, and Southern Asia. I'm a descendant from Europeans who colonized America. I am from a tribe with no name erased by political identity forced upon me. I am Jewish, Muslim, Christian, indigenous, spiritual. According to my DNA results and the research conducted by Maria Elisa Velasquez in her work on the Slave Route Project for UNESCO, I now know that I am a descendant of 250,000 African men and women, peoples of Sangabia, Guinea, Angola, and Congo. These peoples were forcibly brought to the present day Mexico between 1580 and 1650. Yet this concrete and colonization has been erased by derogatory racial epithets like whipback and spick. A border has been drawn on my own continent where my ancestors once walked freely. Now they put us in cages like animals in the name of immigration. I have been told I am not a First Nations people and Mexico, the country, hid its ugly, shameful history of institutionalized slavery. And now here in America, those in power tell us who we are by putting us into colonized pan-ethnic group. So my first lesson is you get to call the terms on our own, on your own identity and embrace it. No one can or should take that away from you. Know that identity politics is a power game. Lesson number two, you'll be treated badly on a regular basis. So choose your battles wisely. Many of us have already experienced this and as you continue with your education, your degree will not soften racism. So there will be micro macro aggressions. Don't engage them. It is not our job to fight every microaggression because lots of people around us are racist, but do fight for equal pay, housing, education, and justice. Lesson number three, as you confront regular and even daily racism, find a safe space to freak out. For me, it's my car. Sometimes I drive and I cry. When it gets really bad, I pull off to the side and I scream at the top of my lungs. If someone comes by and asks if you're okay, I just tell them I broke up with my partner and they leave me alone. But the point is, it's okay to be angry. It's okay to be sad and frustrated. It's okay to have a bad day. Don't let people weaponize your emotions against you and label you emotional, fragile, or angry because that's just more bullshit microaggression. Lesson number four. Okay, this one's kind of funny. Walk like your shit don't stink. <laughs> I learned this growing up in South Omaha. If I didn't walk with an air of confidence, I'd get my ass kicked. So today when I walk into a room, I come across as confident and it's easier to hide the fear in my gut. But even if you walk confident, confidently into a room, remember, you may still experience being invisible, hated, tokenized, patronized, seen as less capable, and ignored. Lesson number five, be a legend in your own mind. I team taught with my colleague, Jared Lacey last winter, and I kept saying things like, I wrote this paper and it's so good. He kind of chuckled. I realized I must sound ridiculously conceited. So I explained, as a woman of color, I don't hear a lot of affirmations, so I am always telling myself how good I am. This is important because it helped me keep a, a healthy dose of self-esteem, especially when the world is constantly shitting on us, which leads me to lesson number six. Know your value. You think that you must constantly putting, putting in lots of effort, proving yourself, putting in 120% or more, working harder than everyone else to demonstrate your worth. Now, let me tell you right now, stop it. Uh, it doesn't matter if you put 100 or 200%, it will never be enough. Nor, nor will it remove the preconceived biases that racist people have about us. So do yourself a favor. Do your job like everyone else and save your energy on things that matter, like your family, your friends. For me, it's exercising. For you, it might be other things. Protest for things that you believe in. Lesson number seven. You are not alone. Look around you and you will find family, friends, and allies. I have my children and my husband. Lesson number eight. 
We are stronger when we all come together. So stop carrying the world. Sorry. Lesson number eight. We are stronger when we all come together. So stop carrying the weight of the world on your shoulders by yourself. I know that the world is pretty messed up. But if you're lifting it up by yourself, then those in power continue to stay in power. That means we need to carry the weight of the world on all our shoulders and work together as a community. But be prepared to be labeled, misrepresented, and threatened. Fear tactics are not only used in autocratic governments, but here at home. They will call us crazy, thugs, militants, feminists, and they will use a tone of disgust. They will use social media to disseminate their lies and hate. Use shallow and deep fakes. Meanwhile, we need to educate ourselves. Go to reputable, go to reputable sources, cross-reference, read scholarly work like Patricia Hill Collins, read about our history, not the skewed version that favors white dominance and racism. Learn about how systems throughout history have used divide and conquer tactics in the name of diplomacy. Learn how divide and conquer continues to be used in our own domestic soil. So, <clears throat> so stay educated, and informed. Lesson number nine, find inspiration. Find inspiration all around you and know how you inspire others. When I was in college, I was the president of Toastmasters. This was a speech club. I competed in a citywide competition and I won, but later lost due to being a member for only a few months. Apparently you had to be a member for at least a year. I, I didn't know that when I competed, but that's not important. What's important is that the winning speech I gave was about racism, which was my own personal story. I was inspired to share because what was happening around me at the time. Someone had, someone had finally caught on tape police officers beating a person of color, Rodney King. My story also involved a beating. Trigger warning, everybody. The story might be unpleasant, but I think it's important that I share it with you. My two sisters and I were with our parents traveling from Omaha, Nebraska to Colima, Mexico. My parents' birth state, we were going to Colima to basically visit family. As we passed through Oklahoma, we stopped at a rest area. My mom had to use the restroom. When she entered the restroom, a white woman physically assaulted my mother. The racist woman told her, go back to Mexico. When my mother returned to the car where we were waiting, she was visibly battered. My parents did not professionally speak English and were scared. So we left as quickly as possible. The interesting thing about inspiration is that it can come from good and bad places. These incidents inspired me to go to graduate school so that I could inspire the next generation. And I was left hoping this spring quarter, as I read your emails and heard your stories in the classroom, I learned what you were doing. Some of you participated in the protest for equality. Some of you told me that you were tear gassed, others hit by big rubber balls. I heard some of you sneaked out from home to participate and others were having meaningful conversations with family members. Those who could not pr protest publicly protested on social media. As I heard your stories and read your emails, my heart melted because finally, finally change was happening. I no longer had to hope because hope implies doubt, but now I could believe. I want to thank you for being my inspiration. So as you move forward with your convictions and actions to create equality for all, remember that you are inspiring others. But there will be times when you need inspiration. So turn to music, writers, activists, nature, anything or anyone or any place that refills your cup of passion. I would like to share a quote from Martin Luther King, one that inspires me and helps me believe. If you can't fly, then run. If you can't run, then walk. If you can't walk, then crawl. But whatever you do, you have to keep moving forward. Only in darkness can you see the stars. And lesson number 10, Black Lives Matter. Now is the time. to lift our nation from the quicksands of racial injustice to the solid rock of brotherhood. Now is the time. Congratulations to the class of 2020. Keep pushing. Forget the fear. Forget the doubt. Keep investing and keep betting on yourself. And congratulations.
congratulations to the class of 2020. I just want to say congrats to you guys. You guys are doing so many amazing, special, special things. Class of 2020, you made it! Best of luck in the future. Congrats. Congratulations, congratulations graduates. graduates. Here's a big congratulations to everyone in the class of 2020. To the class of 2020, just want to say congratulations, you guys. You have work pay off, and now your future is bright. Hi, everybody. We're in The Simpsons, and we have a special message for the class of 2020. Where's the damn neck hole? <laughs> Hats off to you, graduate. Good luck. That was so good. Congratulations, class of 2020. I'm Carrie Levitt, Vice President for Student Learning and Success. Usually, my role at commencement involves leading the procession of trustees, faculty and staff, and our graduating students into the big tent right here on this lawn. Then I serve as the MC for the ceremony, introducing speakers and inviting you up for your momentous walk across the stage. This traditional journey of progressing in and then recessing out of the ceremony symbolizes the moment of time when you transition from student to graduate. This year, my role is a little different. I have the opportunity to offer some closing thoughts and share with you the tradition of transferring your tassels and raising your caps in celebration of your accomplishments. Before we get to that moment, I want us to pause and recognize the folks that helped us get here our faculty, our staff, and perhaps most importantly, your family and friends. These folks have nudged you forward on your most challenging days and celebrated with you on your best days. Thank you for being there for all of our students. And to all of our students, know that we are all very proud of you. Earning a certificate or a degree comes with new rights and responsibilities. As a graduate of Cascadia College, one of your responsibilities is to carry forward that on which we stand. Diversity, equity, and inclusion, collaboration, access, success, innovation, environmental sustainability, global awareness, responsiveness, and creativity. These are the values that bind us together in community. Whatever you do, wherever you go, work to make your part of this world better for everyone, knowing that Cascadia will always stand with you. Your moment has come. You are no longer students, but graduates. To the community of our trustees, our faculty, our staff, and friends and family, I present to you Cascadia College's Class of 2020.